There's a lot of interest recently in Canada's electric vehicle manufacturing industry. And uh, we started off a little slow, but we're, uh, we're catching up now. And I want to talk to Flavia Volpe, who is the head of the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association, about a really interesting project they're working on. Welcome to the interview, uh, Flavio. Thanks for having me. Like, why don't you just give us an, an overview of Project Arrow? You know, um, in March 2019, there was a guest of the Prime Minister at the throne speech in Ottawa, sat there uh, in the Senate chamber and listened to the speech say, look, we, our target is a net zero economy by 2050. And here's the challenge to all the industries. Think about how you're going to get there. Start thinking about it now. It's it's uh, sooner than you think. And, um, and, you know, I got back to the office here and we had been working on technology demonstration fleets for five or six years, meaning we took cars, usually Lexuses that are made in Ontario. And we'd say to our members who had technology, commercially ready technology to, de to demonstrate, why don't we put them on those fleet of Lexuses and we'll take them everywhere. You know, consumer electronics show, LA Auto Show, or tech demonstrations of, you know, GM, Toyota, Mercedes, Tesla. Well, we got back here and said, here's the Prime Minister's challenge. Why don't we drop a gauntlet in return? And why don't we why don't we put our money where our mouth is on this claim that in Canada, we make every single part of the of vehicle uh, components, uh, everything from the wheels to the driveline to body to power electronics to uh, alternative propulsion. So we came up with this with this idea that we would uh, launch a all Canadian designed, engineered, and supplied zero emission uh, lightweight vehicle. We borrowed shamelessly from one of the other uh, Canadian um, myths uh, and stories uh, of uh, what Canada could do on a clean sheet. You know, of course, the Avro Aero. Um, what we wanted to do was conjure up that generation. Never mind how that ended. You know, we're not selling cars to the American uh, to the American military, but but. Um, uh, what could we do to uh, launch a project? And so uh, that was the genesis of let's build our own car. And and uh, we've got 380 companies that want to do it with us. Uh, this is a concept electric vehicle. It could be yep. manufactured in Canada. Uh, right. You kind of launched it at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas in, uh, in January. And uh, you've got a schedule here uh, for rolling it out on tour in 2022, I understand. That's right. That's right. So um, we launched it in January 2020. We did a design competition uh, that resulted in a design in uh, October of 2020. Went for RFP for suppliers uh, last CES, 380 plus companies involved. We hired uh, chief engineer of special projects for Master Martin to be our chief engineer and hired the former CTO at McLaren and put together a team that between the uh, Ontario Tech University in Oshawa and um, our virtual partners at the uh, Windsor Essex VR Cave, uh, we've got a schedule that puts, that puts a car together at the end of 2022 and we go back to CES in, uh, in January 2023, but we're also building a virtual twin and a digital twin, virtual for promotion and then uh, digital, of course, uh, for a, a potential produ production sequences, both of the components, but uh, of the vehicle itself. Now, I understand how you could design this digitally. Uh, yeah. The industry is well set up for that. How do you put together the prototype? So walk us through that. So first of all, you hire somebody like uh, Fraser Dunn, who uh, with Aston Martin over 19 years, uh, put together a lot of short run vehicles, including the Bond cars for the 007 films, which are, you know, deep, this latest one, DB5 is based on a BMW E46 platform. Um, then, of course, the companies that we're dealing with and that we represent are uh, tier one suppliers and tier two suppliers to original equipment uh, manufacturers, the car makers. And so what we're working with is, look, we put together, uh, we bake the engineering, and then we work backwards with the companies that will make the components. Uh, the ones that are that go on the surfaces, of course, have to be uh, custom tooled and made. Uh, but a lot of the other systems, uh, they kind of uh, mix and match and get into place. Building the physical car is not an issue. Uh, we have enough time to do it, and it's going to be exciting to see it. Now, what do you do with it? And we're going to go out and promote Canadian suppliers around the world, but it's that digital twin that's really important. We want to show people that, look, hey, by the way, this is a production-capable configuration. 
And does somebody want to build it? You know, we're a trade association. I'm happy to partner with someone to build it. But I'm also putting together notes that we're going to give to everybody. You know, you want my notebook on how to become a startup in Canada? We are doing all the homework. And we think there should be a startup culture here, just like there is in Silicon Valley. We've got the technology and we're better at cars. Well, I, I want to ask you about that because I've been arguing for a couple of years now that the there's a difference in electric vehicle manufacturing that it's uh, simpler to, to manufacture and it it allow, could allow Canadian startups to make niche vehicles for things like you know our cold weather resource industries, forestry, right. mining, and oil and gas. Is that kind of where you're what you're getting at? Well, certainly, you know, uh, the electric powertrain, of course, is a lot simpler than the internal combustion powertrain. The DNA of vehicles, 95% are the same, but it allows for those like companies like Miller Technologies that makes off-road vehicles uh, for mining use in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the, the northern mining uh, uh, regions of uh, Canada uh, to be able to play in on an electric vehicle, uh, mass electric vehicles. There's a lot of uh, companies, and we know some of them, like Electromechanica, or a company being started by Frank Stronic, who's the original founder of Magna, City Cars. It is uh, the evolution of vehicles uh, through the uh, electric or zero emission uh, technology evolution, but also the way that governments around the world are treating uh, vehicles, low-speed vehicles, neighborhood vehicles, uh, off-road, on-road, uh, all things that started with, you know, the for me, one of the, the parting points is the congestion charge in the city of uh, London, you know, 15 or so years ago. Uh, governments are very uh, important to how uh, consumers uh, relationships with their vehicles, uh, what those dynamics are. And I think uh, electric vehicles or fuel cell vehicles help to enable a whole bunch of other technologies and a bunch of other scales that Canada is really, really good at. We've got the natural resources, but we're also very, very skilled at, uh, at uh, uh, information technology. And of course, we are currently the global headquarters of, of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. The, the, the opportunities are endless. Well, let's talk about Project Arrow, because I'm kind of uh, keen to get into the technical side of this. Thing. Sure. So to walk us through the, the, the drivetrain, the, the battery size and type, uh, what kind of a vehicle is it? So it's a, it's, a, it's a CUV platform and we're still baking some of the engineering here. So if we check back in three to six months, we'll have it exactly. Um, it is, uh, imagine the size of, uh, of a um, uh, Acura MDX or a uh, Lexus RX. Uh, we are of course uh, going to, uh, it's zero emissions. We're deciding we're very likely to go battery uh, but we're also very uh, cognizant of the the amount of interest we have from the fuel cell uh, uh, sector here in uh, Canada. What we're likely going to do is we're going to do a battery electric vehicle uh, with uh, with a um, a standard range. Uh, you know our targets are 500 kilometers. We're looking at, at different types of uh, of uh, chemistries. Very interested in uh, in a Canadian company that just announced a lithium ion battery enhanced by graphene. Um, we are, uh, this vehicle isn't just zero emission vehicle. We wanted to feature all of the autonomous connected, uh, interactive technology that are available here in Canada. One of the orientations we're going to have on the vehicle is the vehicle is a caregiver. You know, uh, a, a lot that, that happens in a digital world versus an analog world is an analog world. Uh, there is a time where a, a driver is, uh, either short or long-term incapacitated or unable at the very least to meet the, the, the standards of safety uh, uh, to be on the road. Well, what can a vehicle do uh, to help you with that? Whether you've got a condition or a condition comes on or whether you're older, uh, whether you've got deteriorating eyesight. Um, the orientation of this car, there's gonna be some surprises. That we call that package of thought uh, vehicle as a caregiver. It, um, what we're doing is building to the 2025 year model year specs. We're gonna take no shortcuts. Uh, it is a vehicle and a concept that will be uh, that will adhere to Canadian uh, uh, motor vehicle safety standards. And what we can do in the in the concept uh, is about uh, this much in terms of those standards. But on the digital twin, we're going to go right to the end. Um, it's the challenge we made to our suppliers to say this isn't a science experiment. If you're going to feature something on this, make sure it's available for sale because we're going to feature it to all the OEMs that we deal with and currently have the list of, of, that, that we deal with uh, numbers 21. Well, 
Uh, one of the things I keep hearing from the experts that I interview around electric vehicles, batteries, and so on, is the technology is changing very, very rapidly. Right. Uh, and and so uh, I think, and again, this is something I'm, I'm often told that by the time we get to 2030 and we look back on 2021, we'll be astonished at the, how much has changed. And uh, this seems to be a, an observation that holds true in the, um, in the automotive sector, in the EV sector. Give me one or two examples of things that, you know, the average consumer maybe wouldn't be aware of, but will be designed into your car that will be kind of, you know, astonishing or, or you know, will be amazed. One of the things that are you trying to get me to scoop myself? One of the things that uh, that is a challenge and historically been a challenge for um, uh, electric vehicles is what do you do with the battery? How does it affect the driving dynamics? And of course, we've all come to the conclusion that we're going to build skateboards. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is uh, can the engineering uh, support uh, some of that battery chemistry being in the structural components of the vehicle, therefore allowing you to do a different uh, uh, and more of an analog driving experience uh, and to be able to uh, position the vehicle's interior in a way, such a way that not only are we featuring um, zero emission uh, uh, technology, what we're trying to do is also give a window into a driverless technology and a driverless future. And we may come out as uh, level three, but then we want to give it a window to level five. And so what you'll see in this vehicle when we put it on tour is that uh, we put as much thought into the interior, the ergonomics of the interior, what a vehicle of the future looks like, and then what can that enable, both in terms of how it, how your seats and the interior can reconfigure itself, but also in which a lot of the technology that we are, we all think about that will connect with infrastructure and other cars, no, it's going to, we've got a whole bunch of technologies that face the driver and the passengers that make for a, a uh, we hope uh, that people will see a very different experience. Flavio, thank you very much for this. This has been a fascinating insight, and we'll check back with you in the, later in 2021, see what kind of progress you're making. Love to be back.